Tyler Joseph's a terrible person, is what I would say if I was an activist in his mentions the past few days. Sup fam, it's Richie from Social Justice Warrior. Can't believe I haven't done that one before. Have, have I done that one before? Tyler Joseph, frontman of 21 Pilots, uh, multi-platinum selling artist. They're one of the biggest alternative artists and arguably one of the most influential bands of the last 10 years. I could say that without hesitating. So when I normally see someone getting canceled on Twitter, I can generally get behind it, I can generally, even, even if I disagree with it, I can put my brain behind the people that are angry and be like, okay, I see where you're coming from, I can morally justify that if I was trying to put myself in their shoes, uh, sometimes it takes a little mental gymnastics, but I get it. But when the activism circle comes for someone like Tyler Joseph, a incredibly wholesome person, he doesn't tweet a lot, he's not on social media very often, he focuses on the art. I respect him deeply. 21 Pilots is one of my favorite bands. I don't think I've ever talked about politics on this channel, and I don't intend on starting to. Uh, it makes me very uncomfortable how divisive everything is, how everyone looks at something in binary, in black and white, and how these types of people, whether it be activists, anti-activists, or just overly political people, tend to forget that they're human and that they have egos. Talking about politics is like trying to engage with that guy who wants to talk about God at 4 a.m. at that drunken college party. It, it just, it's, it's not gonna go well. It never goes well. But anyway, so Tyler Joseph, he's in some hot water. He hasn't tweeted for three months as of a couple days ago. His last tweet on June 1st was talking about Pride Month because he's a wholesome human being. Three months later, September 2nd, he tweets out, seemingly out of nowhere, although it's probably has been festering with him for a minute. He says, you guys keep asking me to use my platforms. Feels good to dust these bad boys off. And he tweets pictures of him in brand new platform shoes. Obviously, uh, a, a very dad joke. I don't think Tyler Joseph knew what kind of hellscape Ant Hill he was about to kick over by poking fun at activists. And this was tweeted out, as I said, on September 2nd, which is National Suicide Awareness and Prevention Day. Oh, I don't know how much weight those days have. I know this has probably been the worst year of my life so far, and I think a lot of people share the same sentiment. It's been really hard mentally, uh, having to stay inside, having to quarantine yourself. It's just been an incredibly tumultuous time in human history, so any kind of support that anyone's willing to give to prevent people from literally killing themselves very welcome. People from the Black Lives Matter movement, or the BLM for short, were not happy with this because the platform tweet was very directly, at least I think, very directly aimed at them for people trying to tell Tyler Joseph what to advocate for because it's not like he doesn't use his platform for good. If you listen to even one 21 Pilot song, you know even in his art he's trying to help people. Their last single level of concern all the proceeds were donated to various charities. Which is what makes all of this kind of dumb drama hit a little harder. Because I understand when you're trying to cancel a person that has been proven to do awful things or does not contribute to anything. I get it. But when someone like this is under fire and he's literally in the process of tweeting out good things, but it's not the right good things, according to the people in his mentions or the activists. I, I mean, I, I want to call them activists because that's that's what they are. I feel like the blowback in regards to this joke tweet perfectly encapsulates the mentality of the BLM movement or kind of internet activism as a whole. It's like, hey, thanks for sticking up for LGBTQ rights and human equality and suicide prevention and doing all these amazing things for the youth, but also f fuck you for not talking enough about BLM because it's not like he didn't talk about it at all. He's brought it up on other platforms, but it's this constant idea of control. That's what I always seem to find is the root of most armchair activism, is control. They want to control what you say, what you do, and if you don't think like them, you're a horrible person. The Black Lives Matter cause is, is anti-racism, it's anti-establishment, it's saying there's a problem, a very fundamental problem in our culture, or at least in Western culture, and it needs to be fixed, and it needs to be fixed now because we're angry, we're, we're tired of people getting murdered in broad daylight 
by authority. Nobody, or, okay, very few people are arguing that. I think a lot of people coming at Tyler right now, I, I mean, I would love to see how much they've donated or how, how much good they've done for the world. It just feels so virtue signally. It feels so hollow. Like, it's so easy to be negative. And it's really difficult and takes a lot of work to be compassionate and to understand that there's nuance in everything. And to see that maybe the platform tweet was a little short-sighted. Maybe it was a little tone-deaf. I will acknowledge that. But understand the context of who Tyler Joseph is and what he's done. Like, what he's done for millions of people. You're just gonna cancel that out? Really? You don't have to look very far to find paragraphs with hundreds of likes on them saying how horrible Tyler is or how short-sighted and how he's a racist and he doesn't care about black people and it's just like... I don't know when this is gonna end. I think this mentality can be summed up in this meme of uh, MCR saying, hey, fuck cancer, and then the Beatles, who have never written a song about cancer, uh, possibly pro-cancer. There's an overwhelming amount of issues in the world, like very heavy, fundamentally flawed things in the world that need to be fixed or need to be addressed, but sometimes you have to pick your battles. You can't save everyone. And it's clear that Tyler Joseph has picked mental health and suicide prevention, and that is a whole horrendous thing in itself. So to get angry at him, to not be openly advocating for everything that you want him to advocate for, I mean, how about you tweet about it? How about you talk to people about it? Anyone can make a difference on this kind of stuff. That's why it's called activism. You're acting on it. And I'm trying not to rant about this too much, but this kind of brings us all full circle back to a tweet that Tyler made in 2015. It was a, it was a notes app moment where he talked about essentially this same subject five years ago that I'd like to read for you. Tyler says, it breaks my heart to see that not posting would lead some of you to believe that I do not love and support you. This is simply not true. Any day we're love defeats hate, you can know I'm celebrating, just maybe not on Twitter. As for the silence, through personal experience, I want to create and influence something that might help others navigate through the battlefield that is the brain. And for those of you who understand that terminology, you know that battle I'm talking about. But while at this mental ground zero, I have found that any other influence added on, no matter how noble, becomes too heavy for me to carry. I'm not strong enough. Be patient with me as I grow, that someday I might be able to carry more weight. But for now, I write what I know. Both Joss and Mean This, with love and support. And I think that was a perfect way to say it. You have to pick the causes that matter most to you. That doesn't mean the other causes mean anything less to the world or any less of a problem that needs solving. And if people want to get mad at him for not talking about things that they care about personally, I mean, I can literally look up symptoms of a toxic relationship, although I don't know why I would have to, rattle off all the signs and they would match right up with how these activists are coming at Tyler Joseph or people that they disagree with. You won't win anyone over by constantly living in absolutes, constantly issuing ultimatums, uh, gaslighting people into believing what you believe or their scum, constantly falling for overly radical ideas and demonizing people that don't agree with you. It, it, it's You're not gonna win. You're gonna push yourself so far off the deep end that you're gonna become what you hate. I know that sounds dramatic, but it's true. And I think the sentiment that bothers me most about the armchair activists is that I see, I always see so much outrage and so much anger and so much passion behind that anger and outrage and wanting change and wanting to like dismantle systems, but I never see any hardcore solutions. I just see answers to the problem. Like yeah, you can cause havoc and tear down society and be vocal about the systems that you believe are corrupt and terrible and inherently systemically racist, but then what? It's so easy to be radical and idealistic, but when it comes down to it, ultimately politics are about compromise and trying to get the most of what you want, but you'll never get everything of what you want. And what I'm seeing here is that if these people don't get everything of what they want, they want nothing. They want to burn it all down. And it's just like, I just wish some of these people with this political mindset yelling at Tyler Joseph about his tweet would pick up a history book and see the cycles that politics always tend to go in. And in order to make meaningful change, you need to be able to have an open discussion with your enemy. You need to be able to be willing to compromise if it means it benefits the greater good. Uh, so anyway, I digress. I don't want to keep going because then more people will get mad, but uh, Tyler Joseph's a good person. 21 Pilots makes some real good music. It makes me genuinely sad that most of the videos about 21 Pilots always get so much hate because I respect that band so much, but their fan base can be so volatile and it's just, it's disappointing, but 
what can you do? Anyway, time for my personal plugs. If you're uh, if you're interested in what I do or what I'm saying or the music that I make and want to help me continue to go forward, you can subscribe to me on Patreon. I try to do my best to put exclusive content on there that no one else has or earlier song previews and stuff like that. I also have my own personal merch store that I run out of my garage, so I hand ship everything by myself. It is a lot of work, but it's fine. It's fine. And as always, stay sad, but not too sad. I hope you all are well. I'll see you in the next one. Mwah. Oh, hey, look, it's the names of most of my patrons who help keep noodles on the table to prevent me from starving to death, while also very stubbornly refusing to let my dreams of being an independent artist die. So I appreciate you guys very much. Thank you. So this is the end. There's a need to pretend you don't want me. Anymore It just wasn't meant to be So we tried and we tried anyway We lay it to ourselves so we'd stay Yeah, we tried and we tried